Hello, I'm Jason Skill. This is Painting with Skill, Lesson 9. This lesson is about controlling the brush marks so that you can paint fat and thin marks without lifting your hand off the paper. The main trick to this skill is your ability to raise and lower the brush. Now here I have a pen. What I often get students to do now is to hold a pen in their hands as if they're going to write at first. So normally they would write like this, perhaps, slightly with the pen ahead of them. I then get them to slightly relax it so that it's more uh, basically parallel to their body. This then would be placed on the paper. So if I wanted to pull that, then I would just make... They get used to the idea of drawing with that kind of movement with the brush, so that again they're thinking about the direction of the woodwork, the brush pointing where they intend the mark to go. Then I ask them to make this get higher. So this has to get higher so that the brush can be altered in height from the page. So what you do is the, your fingers are like a pincer movement and that's going to go up and down holding the pen and it's going to rub on the section of your finger that normally becomes a little bit uh, hard skin because that's where your, your pen or the brush rubs when you're uh, writing or painting. So I put that on the page and in this pincer movement I pull back, drop down, pull back, drop down pull back and just get them to practice that for quite a long time so that they get used to this idea of pushing it up and dropping it down. Now if I put brush in my hand here I've just got some sepia on the brush hold the brush in exactly the same way as I would have done the pen and we can just do that routine where you hold it at say this width and I pull my arm along so I'm not doing anything with my hand or I'm not floating my arm in the air I'm holding that and running my hand along and as we did with the previous video I might slightly move me at the same time to make this go thicker what I would do is perhaps push down a little bit so I'm taking that pincer movement and I'm pushing it down a bit and I'm also perhaps rocking my arm my hand and my arm over so my hand will slightly come uh, down over and my elbow will slightly come up and then I'll push that down which will make it thicker if I wanted to make it even thicker then I may roll my hand even more press that further down the woodwork will become uh, slightly more vertical and my arm may become slightly more higher my elbow to push that down If I wanted to make it a thinner mark, what I will do is I'll just get it to the point where it just touches the paper and pull that along the line. And I might practice how high I can get that, even fully loaded, and just touch. So that's your first thing, is can you control the height and how big the mark is by how much pressure you place upon the paper. The next thing is can you raise and lower the brush to vary the width of the line. So I'll start with it, say, at a medium depth, and then I'm dropping the brush. I'm slightly rolling my hand over, and then I'm lifting my hand, rolling my hand slightly back, and pulling it up, pushing it down, pulling it up. So you can change it by just simply rocking your hand a touch. Or you can do it with pincer movement. So what you do is you place it down. It's probably easy if you start from fat. And then you pull the brush up with the pincer pulling towards you. Dropping it down, pushing it down, pulling it up. Pulling it up, dropping it down, pulling it up. Dropping it down, pulling it up, dropping it down, pulling it up. Now the difficulty you've noticed, I'm also moving as well. This arm is moving along. This can be a little bit tricky when you first start off. Students sometimes complain that they feel like they're kind of patting their head and rubbing their tummy at the same time. So you practice making it fat, making it thin, making it fat, making it thin. Now, when I lift the mark off, what I sometimes do is I very slightly roll this round a tiny bit. So it's almost like I've just turned this round the clock face. So maybe just gone to say quarter past. So as I lift it off, I turn it. Now if you watch the hair carefully, what it does is if I try to just lift it straight off, I've actually splayed the hair out. So I basically I've flattened it and as I lift it up it's still a bit fat. If I turn it a quarter past, it's more likely to be sharp. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going flat, lifting it up, 
making it go flat and lifting it up. By turning it so flat, lifting it, turning it, dropping it back down, lifting it, turning it, dropping back down. So I'm basically going like this, down, up, down. Now why might you use that mark? You might do that mark uh, so that you can illustrate um, movement in water, for example. I may choose to make a mark and then it makes fatter and thinner. And if I just say painted a line over that, the white section here might then appear to look more like a wave. You may do it if we go more vertical with this mark, or let's do it sideways, it'll be easier, is you might start thin and then go thicker and then lift off. And if I turn that, say, at a 45 degree angle, I'll do that and push it down and lift it off, it begins to look more like um, a blade of grass. And if we begin to dare to move and change the direction of that whilst we lift, you can see that these could look quite convincing as overlapping grasses. It's one of those skills that uh, you gain over time by just simply practicing that movement over and over again. And it is a useful way of controlling the brush because you're not sort of drawing it like that and then thinking, I better make this fatter. It's none of this arm in the air. It becomes a smooth action, a smooth motion. You may also do it and change angle. So you could do it so it goes fatter to thinner to fatter, to thinner, so that you're actually changing what you're doing, the angle, the rhythm of it. You might even turn back on yourself. You know, so I'm almost doing this. I'm feeling my way. It's, it's as much about what you're doing with your mind and how you're, you're moving yourself to reflect what you're doing. And remember, a lot of the time when you're painting, you're kind of acting it through in your mind. Painting is sometimes a bit like acting with a brush. Never forget that. One last thing. Let's imagine that you wanted to paint from the top down. What you would do is you'd paint thin to thick to thin. Now what I'm doing there is I'm holding it, so I'm taking the sharp side, pushing it down, I'm dropping it, and then I'm lifting it. I'm doing exactly the same thing I'm doing this way, I'm just doing it ahead of myself, I'm not pushing it. Try not to push the brush with this kind of work. Drop it down, push it up, and make it thin. You could do it that way, it's worth practicing that way, as well as going thin, pushing it, and lifting it. Now, if you notice this time, because I'm working ahead of me, I've actually had to make the woodwork go that way. So I'm running on the same sort of mark, but the angle of my hand has changed to push, to lift. I'm still running on that bit of my finger underneath. So there's some things to think about, that you're altering the depth of the brush and you're working with this pincer movement. Try altering the angle of your hand and experimenting with those marks. You'll find it a very useful little skill to play with. In uh, lesson 10, we'll be looking at print marks.